Welcome to World Builders Anonymous. Kick that world building addiction and actually finish that novel with your hosts, Vito and John. snapped instead of clapped. Sorry about that. I heard that and I was disappointed. <laughs> you ready? I can make a sound. Ready? Okay. What was that? Hey, that was the top of my shaker bottle. Oh, was that meant to be the, the, the start of the episode? Yeah, we're going. Oh gosh, I wasn't re- I wasn't prepared. Uh, hi, everybody. What is up? Uh, welcome back. I did the drink sound today. Okay. And now I can take a satisfying uh, sip while Vito talks about nothing. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, mm. totally. <laughs> oh, so satisfying. So satisfying. I wish I had something as satisfying as Johnny has. Um, yes. Anyway, <laughs> we're here for a short episode today uh, between uh, an engagements that we have, but we wanted to get an episode out there for you guys because it's been a while and we want to stay somewhat consistent instead of... Uh, yeah, we only missed one week. Yeah, we've never missed more than one. Well, I don't want to say never. That's I not true. We have. Yeah. <laughs> we're trying not to miss more than one week in a row, though. We're going to try to uh, produce a few episodes to have in reserve for you guys when uh, we're not, not able to record every single week on the scheduled time that we have. But we'll figure that out anyway. But it's fair to say that life is a little hectic right now. Yeah, a little bit. I actually made some progress this week, though. <laughs> Between uh, literally flying airplanes and studying to take tests about <laughs> airplanes. So, yeah, <laughs> that was good. Well done. Yeah, I also made some me. progress. That's good. Uh, finished, finished chapter 10. Wow. Uh, which is it got, closing on 30,000 words. Nice. I am uh, awesome. thoroughly impressed with myself. Um, <laughs> you should be. I've never written a tenth of this, so I've never written a tenth of that. Well, that's not true. Oh, that's not true at all. That's not true. <laughs> You're not telling the truth today. <laughs> just yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, hyperbole abounds. Um, yeah, Dude, so we got a, a few t-shirt. things. Somebody put that on a t-shirt. Hyperbole oh my gosh, abounds. that is amazing. That's a good one. We should copyright. Write, write that down. Uh, you can't. Don't put it on a t-shirt. We will. If I had uh, a minion, I would have them write that down. I'm not your minion. <laughs> just clarifying that. Uh, so, first thing want to do is uh talk a little bit about uh my writing this week i think we're going to close with vito's uh progress that he has made so we'll start with me which is my favorite thing to start with um that was a joke (laughs) (laughs) i was just letting it go no it's fine uh so like i said put a bow on chapter 10 uh it's really it's kicking into something i feel like i'm yeah are you finding that it's it's um of course, it's developing as you're writing it, but are you, are you kind of in your own head? Is it getting easier to write the longer you're going, I guess, is what it's I'm asking? It's getting easier because I think it's going to get harder again, but it's getting easier right now because I'm to a point where things are set up and I just go into the next thing now. Okay. Instead of having to construct events from the ground up and build up to what's going to happen, yeah. I've now built up to things, and I'm letting events play out a little bit. Which is exa- exactly kind of how we expected it to go, because, of course, at first you're developing your ideas, you're figuring out the world, your characters, who they are, all that kind of stuff. Once you kind right. of have an idea of that and how the story is going to go roughly, um, it makes sense that it would be you know a little easier to keep that momentum going. And yeah, like you said, we also anticipate it kind of being a little bit more difficult once we get to the parts where we really need to start, you know, tying these threads together of different storylines right. and stuff. But that's awesome that it's it's uh, flowing well for you so far. Yeah, and, and things come together a little bit. Different storylines converge in certain ways and present themselves into the next ones, and it it feels good to to be doing this part. Uh, it feels better than when I was first starting out. Even though I enjoyed that writing, it's just. It's a little less uh, brain intensive to come up with events, I think, because I've done the heavy lifting already. I'm just, you know, writing the scenes of those things. And it's going to get hard again, because, like I said, because, you know, more things have to be set up. I'm not done setting things up, uh, but there are things that have been set up that are playing out right now. Yeah. And when you say events, um, it, 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 that's the hardest part for me is to, like, think of concrete things that happen. Um, things yeah. the characters actually do in the story to c- accomplish the plot points that I want to accomplish. You know what I mean? Like, you know yeah. that X has to happen. Like, this person needs um, an incentive to go off on their adventure or whatever it is, you know, whatever plot point you're on. But, like, right. there's a million different ways you could do that that all yeah. kind of influence the other events in the story, and it's hard to think of what exactly is going to fulfill that plot point or that story, sure. I guess, um, 
turning point, I guess. Is right. that something that's easier as you're going along because you're kind of in a groove, as it were, in terms of what the characters are doing and the road they're on, kind of? I will say that discovery writing has been very kind to me. Okay. Um, in a w- things have worked out in a way that I couldn't have planned out, and I think better than I could have planned out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, for example, Darren is at a point where I need to get him to the sort of stronghold of um, the ragged band of ruffians, right? Um, yeah. The super simplified terms. Uh, <laughs> I need to get him there, and I need to find a way to do it that makes sense narratively and that feels like it's not contrived and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It can't just be, oh, a band of ruffians. I've found that. Oh, and I will join your ranks. Can I join uh, you? Yes. Cool. I am now a member of this guild. Um, <laughs> it couldn't work that way. and But there are also a thousand ways you could do it, like you said. Um, and the way I ended up doing it is... Uh, Darren gets injured uh, while engaging in a, a fight alongside Warren. And um, as a result, Warren takes him back to the band of ruffians uh, so that Darren doesn't die, essentially. That's he all he knows to do. obligated towards him now. Right. They're kind of, they're buddies a little bit, and he wants to help him and doesn't want him to just die on the street. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sense. also, Warren led him there. So they feel like he feels kind of responsible. Uh, and so that's how he gets there. And that's not a way that I would have perhaps thought of in advance. But when I got to the scene where they're in a fight with this guy, I'm like, oh, that would be a perfect way to get him there. And I can just move on from there. And once he's there, the the story picks up because he sort of has a base of operations to launch out of. But there are also more complications that arise from that. Yeah, this is really feeling like the right way to go to me as well so far, even though I've not written as nearly as much as you have yet. But it really makes sense to discovery write the first draft and then use that discovery written first draft almost as the uh, foundation of your outline, I guess. And then you can move the pieces around as much as you want and you can have this top-down view. Whereas when we tried to plot before, there were so many unpredictable elements that we could never have anticipated from the scene to scene kind of uh, flow of the story that all influence each other in so many different ways. It was just overwhelming. At least that's how it felt to me. Um, yeah. And it, it's really feeling like this is uh, the, the good direction to go in, especially for a first time attempt at yeah. writing a, a full novel. I'm sure once we get, you know, a little bit more experience under our belts, maybe, or people who have a little bit more experience under their belts, maybe they have a bit more, um, uh, an easier time putting those pieces together beforehand in their minds instead of uh, feeling them out through the pages, you know? Right. There was a, in high school, there was a student who, when we had to write long essays, she would, so we had, in school you're required to like, sometimes there's a multi-step process to essay writing. What like you have to make school thing? You I know, right? Yes. Uh, so you had to like do the outline and, and then, this is specifically for like a 20 page thesis. You had to do this whole outline and then you had to, write blurbs for your whole outline. Each point in your outline had to have like a a few sentences attached to it of content. And the way most people did it was you BS your way through the whole thing and then you basically write the end product from scratch (laughs) because you didn't do any work (laughs) to the whole thing. This other person, uh, this other person in high school, she, when she made her outline and put blurbs in it, she essentially formatted it so that she was writing her entire paper in those blurbs. And then all she had to do at the end was connect them. And that kind of feels like what we're doing with discovery writing, in a way, for the, for the sake of the final draft. In the discovery writing process, you're writing all this stuff that describes your entire story in, a min, in the most, in, you know, is maybe 60% of the final product. And then you're writing more stuff and taking away stuff to connect and to embellish and to, to fix and to, um, you know, add, add detail and doing all these things to polish up the final product but you've done the legwork. You've done the real hard stuff with the first draft. Get the by framework laid, yeah. Just jumping in and doing it, and then you can make it, you know, pretty later. You know, still focus on writing well and 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 doing what you can through the first pass of things to to do a good job. But you know, I'm 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 putting very little pressure on myself as I go to get the world right or to you know describe the scenery super well or to. Um, put a lot of like uh, background characters and background noise in the scenes. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm not which putting a whole probably, lot of effort into which that. Which probably lets you really laser focus in a little bit more than you would otherwise on the characters themselves and the specifics of their, you know, um, their stories rather than yeah. a lot of the fluff, like you said, anyway, which might be more the temptation if you've already plotted it all out. You already know how it's all going to go, and you're just like, ooh, fun stuff. Here we go, you know. Especially, yeah, again, as a, as a, you know, first-timer. Yeah, I'm not worrying very much about what's happening over there. I'm, I'm maintaining a pretty strong focus on, on the present and, and the current scene in the moment and doing a good job to write that scene in, in a good... I'm saying good a lot. It's a bad <laughs> thing to do as a writer. I'm, I'm making, well, we're about writing, to talk about that. <laughs> we are. Uh, and I was actually trying to, trying to subtly transition. Oh, I was trying uh, to subtly transition into something else. <laughs> oh, well. Our, our subtle transitions were clashing. <laughs> well, what were you transitioning to? Well, we're a little past it now, but I was going to say, uh, I don't even remember what the transition was now. Magic! Yay! Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we passed it a while ago, and I sort of saw it going by like, oh, no, no, no. Crap. <laughs> Come back! Come back! Don't go! <laughs> it's it's gone now, but magic, yeah, magic. Bring it back. Here we go. You you were oh, talking oh, about I'm something supposed, oh, like the, I'm supposed to talk. the elements, you know, fluff elements, that kind of stuff, world building type things that you, know, you don't ah, have those yes. distractions. But at the same time, at certain story points, you're forced to kind of think about those things. Oh yeah, they become relevant, and you've made some progress with that. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. So in chapter ten, <laughs> nailed it. Darren Darren first learns in any way how to control his uh, newfound magic abilities. In chapter nine, he discovers this ability, or I guess is be- has it bestowed upon him in a certain way. And then in chapter 10, he's trying to start learning how to use it. And that presents a new problem because I haven't actually, hadn't actually thought of how you go about doing that. I know what he has and what it can ultimately do, but not how he learns to control it or indeed how he controls it. And that could be a big sticking point. That could be something you spend you know, weeks trying to construct because that leads you into the, all of the finer details in the magic system, which I don't care about right now. I don't, I, I don't really care about all the finer details of my magic system right now because it doesn't matter at this point in time. And it really won't matter all that much. I can change how it works if I want to. It's would you say the story your, isn't about the magic. Would you say your magical artifact is more of a MacGuffin than it is an essential part of the, you know, mechanics of the plot? Um, not in a bad I suppose way you, you could but. say that. It's it's certainly a driving force in the plot, but ultimately it's more about the people involved. I mean, like the it, it as a thing that that is sought after by other people is more important than the abilities that it bestows to its user. Would you say that? Certainly, right now. Okay, that's certainly true. Right now, Darren has very little ability to do anything, and he's too afraid to use it anyway because he doesn't want it to be discovered that he can do this. Which is great because he shouldn't be almighty powerful <laughs> right off the bat. No, yeah, I was talking to you earlier about the fact that I want I don't want Darren to be a uber competent main character, and that even includes right now his magic abilities, which he barely even has. Basically, right now, even at the end of chapter ten, he can turn a light off, and turn it back on, or make it dimmer. That's all he can really do. <laughs> Which is useful if you're in a dark, scary cave alone. With a big spider uh, who's about to eat you, and then your friend comes... Uh, anyway, that's a different movie. That's a different book <laughs> slash movie. Yes. Uh, you know, it's useful in certain circumstances, but particularly when you're afraid of discovery, it's completely useless. Uh, so even in that regard, he's not you know terribly skilled. So he still has to rely on others to do a lot of stuff for him that he's incapable of doing. But anyway, you know, you could spend forever working a magic system, and... Um, in, in previous times I've tried to write or in times I've tried to think of stories, I would have spent a lot of time at that point going, okay, well, how does this work and how is it going to work in the future? And how is he going to learn to do new things? And, you know, does, does this idea conflict with things I might want to do later? You know, I'm not, and I'm not going to spend time thinking about that right now because I, I don't have, I don't have the bandwidth in my brain to continue writing the story and thinking about all those things. And so right. I just pick, pick something and went with it. And if it becomes... Um, invalidated later by something else that happens, I can come back and change it because all I have to do is construct another reason or another way he does these things, and it can be anything. So what I ended up doing is he has to, to so he has the stone, and the stone right now makes him glow when it's quote unquote turned on. Makes him glow. He glows. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, which is cool, but it's also kind of weird if you start glowing in public. Um, so he doesn't want to glow. And he only glows when he touches the stone. That's that's the rule. Mm-hmm. Uncontrollably, so want, or he can turn it on. Well, uncontrollably at first. Okay. 
uh, and so he, he manages to kind of get a moment to himself out of view of everyone and tries to learn how to turn it off when he's touching the stone because he doesn't want it to be such that if he ever touches the stone, he starts glowing. And so he sits down and tries to figure it out. And eventually, sort of just on a on an unrelated thing, he, he ends up picturing a candle in his brain, a lit candle, and two fingers coming in and snuffing it out. And when he does that, the light turns off. And his fingers hurt. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> That would be a good touch, don't you think? That would be, yeah. be really interesting. Uh, <laughs> so, and then he's like, oh, well, now it's off. Can I turn it back on? And so he pictures the same candle, but instead of, you know, something snuffing it out, he has a brazier coming in, or a, 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 whatever you call the thing that lights things, uh, coming in and lighting the wick. And sure enough, the light turns back on. And then he pictures a shade being placed over the light, and the light dims. And so he has this sort of mental construct and manipulations to the mental construct impact the way in which things are happening in real life. That's I kind really, of the idea. I really like that sort of um, sort of soft control of the magic in terms of the way you control it is, I assume in this case, pretty personal uh, and kind of unique to the person using it. Like someone else yeah. might accomplish that same effect through a different sort of mental avenue, perhaps. Right. Um, for him, it's a very visual kind of cue, but his brain is learning how to control that thing through through that way and maybe it's not the yeah. only way he could do it but that's kind of the way that he stumbled upon and so that, and there's I always find that really interesting yeah and there's another interesting twist on it because that requires a fair degree of mental control yeah definitely to maintain whatever especially if you're trying to do a, a complex task uh and it's also scientific in a way i i have an idea that in the future um he's there's a, a like a scientist who works with lenses and or you know, his person who's trying to construct lenses to focus light, and and they can sort of teach Jaren the fundamentals of how light works, and that lets him in his mind understand how to manipulate the light to accomplish unique tasks. That's really interesting. Like, and it's a more it's a scientific approach because if Darren pictures a certain kind of lens being placed over the light, maybe it focuses a certain way, but mm. he has to know how to do that. Interesting. Yeah, it's kind of the combination of. Uh, scientific, but also very and subjective. I like mental, yeah. I like the com- combination of science and magic in in storytelling. It's really interesting, uh, and it also makes more sense to the reader. I think than oh, he can just do this now. That's yeah, definitely. You have to focus really hard and be better at magic, and then you can do things. Yeah, that's really maybe cool. there's an aspect to it. There's a mental control side to it as well as an understanding of science and the way you're supposed to do things. Yeah, definitely. I'm liking that a lot. Um, I need to actually read the rest of the chapters you sent, actually. <laughs> and, uh, you don't have that chapter. You don't have oh, I don't have that one. Cool. Nice. No, you don't. Yeah, I've been You're not behind that way. Too, uh, too, uh, um, uh, glued to my computer screen watching airplane videos um, and preparing <laughs> for tests. Once I'm done Welcome with these tests, to I'm going to have life. a lot more time. But uh, yeah. to close out the uh, podcast for today, because I've got only a few more minutes left before I've got to go, uh, I wanted to uh, update everyone on uh, my very, sub- <laughs> very slight progress compared to John's, but... For me, it's a big deal. Um, I was thinking a lot about the uh, series I've mentioned before about like this world ship that's uh, hurtling through space for like a millennia or something like that uh, towards another star system or, or planet. And uh, the series I have in mind covers the history of this ship over the you know the decades and centuries and uh, that kind of thing. And different characters, of course, uh, in different books or maybe you know some of them following the same character cast or some of them doing different things but um with an idea like that it's really hard to know where to start you know Uh, Mm -hmm. because you can do a lot of jumping forward jumping back Uh, it doesn't have to be necessarily linear Uh, Mm -hmm. and events from subsequent uh, centuries past can have a big impact on stories that take place in the future and do you start with that story that takes place in the future and then show how everything got that way and then jump you know a few more centuries forward or go back or whatever go back to the launching of the ship for one book Um, and so I didn't really know where to start with that and that's what's been kind of paralyzing me um, in developing that concept Um, but then uh, I was thinking a lot about that this week and I was thinking what was the event that I really know I want to happen because I don't have to write that book first necessarily but in terms of plotting out the history of events that might be a good place to start like what is the big event that i know i want to happen that's either really cool or um a character that i really know i want that kind of thing and i've always had the idea that there would be (laughs) uh i guess 
uh, in the future, if anyone <laughs> ever reads this book in uh, years ahead, maybe they should not listen to this because it <laughs> might be a big spoiler, <laughs> but who knows? I might completely change my mind. I've always thought it'd be interesting if um, they get to where they're going and find out that that planet actually isn't habitable after all. Right. And uh, the scientists were mistaken, something like that. You know, they've been on this hundreds of years long journey through civilizations <laughs> rising and falling on this spaceship, um, mm -hmm. world ship, really. Uh, and they get to where they're going and they can't actually ha ha inhabit it. So, wow, and of course, there'd be, there'd be a uh, backup plan, of course, uh, for this, a situation like that. I'm sure there's a different planet they would sort of point towards, and this self-sustaining world ship would be capable of going on another mission or voyage, I guess. Um, but it would take, of course, another long time to get there. And the people who were all excited, oh, this is the culmination of all the waiting we've done, and <laughs> we're going to finally get right. off this ship. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> we gotta... And it has a huge impact on their, their confidence in the success of the even idea of what they're doing. I'm sure, yeah. And what effect does that have on this civilization, essentially, that's you know, There could here. be an uprising and because the purpose, of that. The sense of purpose that the people on board this ship feel and what their life means to them uh, in this sort of limbo they've been in as a civilization for so long. Compa what do they think about the people home, back home who sent them on this mission? What do they think about Earth? What do they think about... I don't know. All those questions are really interesting to me. So I think mm -hmm. that's where I want to start now, and I've kind of come up with a few ideas based on that now. And uh, now that I've kind of picked that starting point, I think I have somewhere to anchor everything else um, off of, I guess, right. as it were. Because there's a lot of things that would happen before that, of course, that are really interesting, I think, and really relevant to the way things are at that point in time. But uh, I think it all leads up to that and is um, funneling into that. So uh, once I figure out that moment, I think I'll have a much better idea of the rest of it, forward and backwards. It reminds me of a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. There's a planet called Golga Frinchum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, they essentially decide to get rid of a fifth of their population. So they convince that fifth that the world is ending and they have to get off. The, everyone has to get off the planet. So they're like, oh, we're all going to get into five giant ships and go across the galaxy. And so they load up the first one with a fifth of the population and send it off. And then no one else leaves because they just want to get rid of those people. <laughs> it just reminds me of this. Like they get there and go like, oh. They just wanted to get rid of us. Dang it. <laughs> you remember more of that than I do. Man. I have a weird memory. I remember a tremendous amount of things that I have no reason to remember. <laughs> it just like pops out of nowhere. It's like, oh, yeah, that's the thing that I remember. I remember the name Golga Frinchum. That's the name of the planet that they came from. I remember from. that, I yeah. I didn't remember that that was that planet, though. That's pretty cool. <laughs> like The people they sent off the planet were like telephone sanitizers that's and, right, yeah. and account executives and like everyone people hate. And don't they end whatever. up being the ones who end up, you know, where... Yeah, I mean that's we'll we'll let that no spoiler yeah. go. That's fine. Uh, yeah. They they end up somewhere you might not expect. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, everyone should definitely read that series because it is hilarious and also it's amazing. <laughs> one of the most bizarre things I've read <laughs> at times. It's funny, uh, but yeah, I, I love that idea. I I think that's a good starting place because it's it lets you rely on the history of an the ship, yeah, an but also the isn't concept. the same as the history is the ship of the ship. Like the story is, if the story was a part of the journey, it's the same as the history in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. the, 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 there's a lot of consistency across what's happening now and what's happened in the past. But if you start at that revelation or right before it, it allows you to tell a story that's distinct from the history. And so you get two different dynamics going on with that. Yeah. How cool would it be to open the entire series with that moment where they're realizing that, Oh crap, this planet is, Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they would have figured that out long before they actually reach it though. But th I got to figure out the science based, but I mean, uh, uh, just in my head, like that moment where they're realizing that, you know, they're just entered orbit around this planet and they're sending down scouts to kind of check it out. And they're realizing, oh crap, we can't actually settle here yeah. in that moment. I mean, one of your main characters can even be one of the scouts who who's the one down on the planet. Maybe, yeah. You know, it doing would, that. There's a lot of stuff to work but with. But that there. being like the very opening of the entire series and then going from there forwards and backwards in time and um, yeah. that kind of thing is really interesting to me. So Yeah, well, I love that idea. Yeah, I'll keep working on that. Um Nobody steal it. <laughs> no, nobody take it. It's mine. I'm sure it's not unique anyway. But and I always say though, anything that you do is unique because you did it, even if it's the same idea somebody else had. Well, it's it's like I like to say, if I give you farm boy who finds a dragon egg, you don't write Aragon, you write something else. Right, something similar maybe, but it's still different. Yeah. 
for sure. But anyway, I have got to go. I'm doing more, cool. more airplane things, <laughs> kind of tangentially, but still airplane things. But uh, yeah, I'm glad we could make this happen today, and I uh, hope yep. you guys enjoyed it. We're going to do our best to get these out uh, consistently from now on, and I'm going to do my best to actually get some writing done. <laughs> Look at you go. Look at me go. Practically out, yeah. unstoppable. Yep. Thank you guys for listening, and I think Johnny has our infos for you. Yep. Okay. Social media. Everything is them. world. World Builders Anonymous, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the social medias. Uh, you can find us at World Builders Anonymous. We have a website. It is www.worldbuildersanonymous.com. You can find the episodes there, some articles, some stuff about us, and the like. You will not be disappointed. You can find us on Reddit. We frequent a couple of subreddits there, specifically the Fantasy and Fantasy Writer subreddits. On Reddit, we are WBA underscore podcast. Uh, you can talk to us there and see what we're up to. And you can email the show with any comments, criticisms, works that you want us to look at or read uh ideas thoughts questions whatever you want the that email address is wba podcast at gmail.com i've been i've been talking back and forth with a guy on there about uh, some work he's doing and it's been a lot of fun i've enjoyed it so if you want to be like him uh you can email us stuff there it's cool <laughs> and uh if you want to leave us a review on itunes for the show we would appreciate that uh the jury's out on whether or not that impacts anything or anyone but uh at the very least we like to read nice things about ourselves and so you can do that if also you want john to. gets very angry when you don't leave itunes reviews so you know, you know i've you, been trying to be better about you don't that. want to see him angry be, you wouldn't like me when i'm angry <clears throat> anyway <laughs> anyways Thanks that's all Vito. go to your airplane stuff and we'll see you all next week <laughs>